This week is my full review of the Honda CMX 500 Rebel. First impressions, I think that even if it's your not your type of style of bike, I think it's quite a nice bike to look at. So braking wise, we haven't got an update this year for this bike. We're not going to get the twin discs to my knowledge. I think they are leaving it as a single disc. We still get LED lights all the way around, which are very good. And we still get the very low seat height as well, which is 690 millimeters off the ground. So for shorter riders, this is going to be very, very confidence inspiring for you. And if you're a learner rider and you just pass your big test, then uh, then you, this bike isn't going to intimidate you in any way. It's going to be a very nice and it is a very easy bike to ride. 11.2 uh, litre tank, that's going to last you a good amount of time. And of course we uh, have the indicators as well, which are always on. Pillion carrying, well, what can I say? I mean, these pegs again are quite high up here, uh, down down below there, and uh, it's a very small seat. The padding isn't great on it, uh, but the seat on the rider's one, uh, on the rider's seat, is actually pretty good. Right, so my plan today is to take a ride from here, and then end up over by the beach over there. Well, it's very low to the ground. That's the first thing that you realise as an, an experienced rider. And that's not a, a con against the bike. But overall, it's relatively comfortable. There's a bit of a, a slight reach for the bars. And certainly if you've got sensitive shoulders like I've got, then uh, you may find that um, after an hour or so, you'll, you'll want to uh, stretch your shoulders back a little bit. I do find myself, even at five foot eight, with a 30 inch inside leg measurement I do find that it's quite a it takes a bit of lifting up my leg to get on the pegs certainly if you're going in, a, in and out of traffic stopping and starting all the time and if you're a taller person then you're going to be uh, finding that even more of a chore to actually run this bike is is um, as cheap as it gets really you know for a middle weight bike and also you've got the service intervals at every 8,000 as well, which is just right really. I mean, I know a lot of these bikes are going up to 10,000 now. For me personally, I wouldn't want to go any higher than, um, than 8,000. And even at 8,000, I'll probably change the oil at sort of 4,000 intervals anyway. So, But then again, I do do these things myself. Just to let you know that it is, uh, you know, it's, it's relatively manoeuvrable. We have got the big fat tyres there. Uh, they do tend to dig into the uh, grooves in the road sometimes and sort of uh, chuck you around a little bit. You know, if you're learning to ride, it might unnerve you a little bit um, because obviously they are big tyres. You know, for cruising around down Exmouth Beach like this, it's, you know, it's ideal, it's really nice. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cross over now to see what it's like on the motorway. Okay, sixth gear, pulling pretty well actually, or 80 miles an hour, and still pulling very, very well. Let's take it down to 70. Uh, I'm getting some vibrations through the seat, and some, not very much on the bias, but just a little bit on the bias, mainly the seat. And even the foot pegs are all right, which surprises me. But of course we've got these uh, rubber mounted uh, handlebars here, which are limiting the vibes coming up through. It's very comfortable doing this. It is a naked bike, so I'm getting all the wind. Mirrors are coming into their own a bit more now. Um, I've got quite a, a, a relatively large blind spot for the mirrors, but I can see quite far back and they are vibrating, which you'd kind of expect really for this type of work. All things considered, it's handling it pretty well. It's not very eager to turn in. You do have to have a bit of rider input due to the you know relatively wide tyres. But again, yeah, it's all right. Oh, 
Well, let's just overtake this lot here. Yeah, once you wind it up, it really does go very well. I'm just going to see what the Honda Rebel 500 can do, 0 to 60. 41, 40, 50. There you go, there's 60. So that's more than acceptable. I think that's uh, pretty good. I got cramp in my leg then. Yeah, so that's pretty acceptable. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to walk you through the bike in the garage today and uh, and just tell you some of the specifications of the bike. So we've got this tried and uh, tested parallel twin here. That's 471 cc's. Same engine that's been used in the CB500F, the X and the CBR as well. So uh, all very good bikes within their own right. Uh, let me run you through some stats. So it's a 471 cc engine. Uh, it produces 45 brake horsepower at 8,500 RPM and the torque figure is coming back at 43.3 newton meters of torque at 6,000 RPM. So relatively high up uh, in the rev range to get the maximum out of the engine. With this style bike, kind of expect something that's quite rough, quite raucous, uh, got a lot of character. But in fact, uh, with it being a Honda, it is actually very smooth. Some people might say it's too smooth, but for me, you know, it, it's a Honda. It's kind of what you expect, really. And I think a lot of people would like this bike to be smooth and it is a very light bike as well only being 190 kilograms and as you can see all the weight is very very low down if you're short in stature then this will be the bike for you uh, I would say that almost anyone could could use this bike and ride it quite happily if you're of shorter nature for taller riders you're going to struggle a bit more the the pegs are quite a long way back here and uh, let me just sit on the bike. I'm five foot eight and I've got a 30 inch inside leg measurement. Obviously I'm gonna flat foot it, no problem there at all. So to sit on the bike, uh, this is very comfortable where I am now, but I do actively have to uh, bring my legs up. What feels quite far when I'm riding, it doesn't feel too bad now, but when I'm riding, uh, it does feel like you, your legs are quite a long way up. Uh, I would even say it would have been nicer perhaps if they put the pegs out just a little bit further on this one. Uh, but it is what it is. And like, like I say, it's not really uh, a bike you know, built for me. I think this has its own niche of uh, people. And some of the other nice points about this bike is that it is relatively high spec, all things considered. A very basic bike, but it does still come with the LED headlight, LED indicators. Uh, the front forks are non-adjustable, but the suspension is quite nice. And in fact, uh, surprisingly, and I wasn't expecting this, but the suspension on the back isn't too bad either. On some bikes that I ride with this hardtail uh, suspension, I find that it does get a bit crashy and it does give you lower back problems. Uh, but on this one, it's not really giving me uh, any problems at all. Uh, the only thing I don't like probably is the mirrors. It is the, the first thing which I'll mention. And really, that's just about it, really. I would like the Parallel Twin to be a little bit more characterful. It is very refined for this style bike. And uh, bike makes no apologies for it, and, and it shouldn't either. You know, it is still a very nice engine. But sometimes on a bike like this, you just want something with a bit more, bit more rumble, shall we say. The things I really like about it is the how basic it is. It's basic biking, and I really like that. There isn't a lot to go wrong on this bike. Price-wise, we're looking at £5,850 for the standard model plus on-the-road costs. And for the S model, which comes with some extra fairings and a better seat, we're looking at £6,250 plus on-the-road. So pretty well-priced and uh, fairly-priced. Uh, considering the market at the moment. 
So overall, I think this bike is brilliant. I think it's a, a very good bike if it's your style of bike and if you're a certain height. It's a bike that you can own. You're gonna be able to push the button every morning to get to work and you know it's going to be ready to go. I just clicked that uh, when I took you around a walk around in the garage at home, I just realized I didn't take you through the switch gear, did I? Okay, right hand bar, kill switch, on and off, then hazards, like so, start button, and then on the left bar, just kick it down into neutral, where's that to there? Uh, left bar, we've got the indicators, horn, and uh, high beam, low beam on there. Alright, so let's see what the bike's like filtering. Got some traffic here and a BMW that seems to want to filter himself. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so filtering, I mean, it's a narrow bike. Very narrow bike. Um, you don't feel like it's going to uh, uh, tip over on you. It's not top heavy at all, so you can, you know, really flick this thing around, even between the lines here. You know, it's. Uh, Yeah, it's very, very flickable, very, uh, well, I, say, I don't want to say very res responsive, I think that's the wrong word, but, um, yeah, it's not bad, it's pretty good. Let's see what it's like going down through here. Again, the mirrors aren't great, but they're just, they're just all right. Get on the outside lane here because it's a filtering lane. It's a little bit jerky, I suppose you could say, at lower speeds. The fueling is a little bit on offish, but nothing that, that that's not in a, a, an offensive bad way. Um, it just could be better, shall we say? Yeah, so down through town traffic, like I say, it's so low that you just don't feel like you're going to drop it or. Um, come to a sudden stop stop and it sort of uh, get overpowering on, on the weight side of things. It's just quite a compliant bike for city riding. And also we've got the uh, very light clutch as well. The clutch is so light on this 500 range. I must say compared to the 500F, I feel like that I could do with it winding in a bit more, being a bit closer, because I feel like I'm reaching a little bit for the clutch on this bike. I can't remember that being the case on the F, on the 2022F. Right, so I've only had this bike for a day. Uh, now, with my experience, it is surprising what I can pick up in a day. And it's not like I'm going to go back and edit the video now and kind of think to myself, well, what's it going to be like long term? Well, it's a Honda. You know, what it's going to be like long term is probably exactly what it's like now. You know, they are good, solid bikes. And uh, what this bike rides not like now is what it'll probably be riding like in 10 years' time, if it's looked after. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to say uh, thank you very much to Bridge Motorcycles for lending me the bike. Um, now, if you want to go to a, a decent Honda showroom, then they've got most of the Honda range uh, in that showroom for the 2022 uh, models. You know, it's a great showroom to go down and uh, have a look around. So thank you very much to them. Thank you very much to you for watching the video. And I will see you in the next one. <laughs>